Hi guys, my name is Maria Küsta. I'm IT Service Manager by Siemens, and today my colleagues and me would like to give you some of you about motivation and challenges we have setting JFrog at the battery running as the IT service in our company. So three years ago, uh, we had follow situation. There were a lot of developer teams working with the different development platforms using diverse decentralized solutions for hosting their binaries. We had teams hosting their binaries on TFS platform, which is in principle not designed for binaries hosting. We had teams hosting their binaries in clear case. Some teams use different shares, putting their binaries there. Some teams hosted the binaries on the local machines. And some teams found some open solutions building shadow ITs. All these solutions had to fulfill some important company requirements, like how to keep binaries secure how to share binaries with other projects, how to fulfill all legal requirements, how to reduce cost administration, and how to make everything more performant and available for developers. There was definitely the necessity in our company to establish a unified central managed platform for binaries hosting, fulfilling all functional and performance requirements coming from developers, and fulfilling all security and legal requirements coming from management and reducing costs for administration. Today, we are providing a global service within Siemens, making Actifactory available for developer teams in our company. We have one dedicated team administrating all Actifactory assets spread worldwide, supporting developer teams to integrate Actifactory in their development pipelines, taking care about all security and legal aspects should be fulfilled in order to manage the binaries in the proper way, and being permanently in touch with JFrog, getting support from their side. Here's our service in numbers. We have Actifactory clusters in 15 locations spread worldwide on three continents. We are hosting 30 or 43 server in the background. We have one team taking care on whole server setup. We have one supplier, JFrog. We're supporting more than 250 software projects and serving around 6,000 developers. We have 150 million successes per month on our systems worldwide. What are the advantages of setting Cytovetry as an IT service? We set up Actifactory as the single binaries hub in our company. We established Siemens in a source hub using Actifactory platform. We have pretty good overview of about third-party binaries being used in our company, scanning them for security and license vulnerabilities. We reduce shadows IT because we have one central service used by many projects. We cover all legal requirements for binaries hosting. We cover all security requirements for binaries hosting. We reduce cost using centralized solution. So these are all advantages we have setting JFrog products as IT service. And my colleagues, our innovation guy, Andreas Miering, and our service architect, Imre Pem, will talk more about the challenges we have running at the factory as the IT service in our company and about solutions we implemented or are about to implement in order to keep our service available, performant, predictable, and secure. So thank you very much. And guys, it's your turn. Bye. After this introduction to our service and how it looks like, I want to give now some hints and how to set up your own service and what supporting technologies you can use. For this, I first want to talk about the difference between the application and the service experience. The application experience is that what you all know of Artifactory. This is basically, is the application great to use and is it good for the users? This is provided by JFrog. However, this is not all that you have as the overall experience. You also have topics like the availability of your system, integrations to third-party products, costs or trainings that you provide to your users. And this is, in the end, your task to make this great. And to talk a bit about the ratio between application and service experience, this might depend on your own offering. The share of the app experience could be bigger or smaller. 
For example, if you consider a system which has just a small scale with a few teams, it's a single instance and you have no legal requirements and only use the system out of the box, it's more or less the app experience. But if you're in a situation where you have quite a huge scale with systems worldwide and you have lots of laws like export control or FDA approvals and an integrated workflow with third party tools like a source code repository in your own company, it might not be that important how good the app really is, but how great your service is. Consider, for example, our service with quite a lot of instances worldwide and dozens of BUs or business units that use it. It's really important how we set up our service. It could be the same for you. And it might be that a bad service offering can outweigh the great application. So keep this in mind. To support you a bit and give you some hints, I want to do now an analysis of some supporting tools and workflows based on some stakeholders. For this, I want to pick the developer and the project manager. Let's first look at the developer. So a typical developer has quite a few interaction points with your service, which you might not often think about, like build failures or downtimes uh, on and offboarding so that he can use your system, some bugs that he might experience during the usage, customizations and interfaces that you have to other company assets and the support and the training that you offer. I want to take a look in depth at the failures and downtimes. So a typical scenario would be that a user has a broken build in the archive artifact step of a CICD engine. And he will ask himself, is Artifactory now really working? How do I find this out? And in the end, if you're a service provider, it means that you're guilty until proven innocent. So people will always assume that it's your fault if something is not working. So gather metrics and data to provide a clear picture whether everything is up and running and everything is working fine. You have to prove this, it's on you. And also define the term running of system. So is it just a ping on the machine? Is this enough for your customers? Is it an HTTP 200 on the main page? Do you have maybe a small sample file that you will upload and download? So, and you say, now the system is working. Or do you have maybe a defined service level agreement where you have a use case and say, we have to upload this artifact. We have some replications and access right changes and because this customer approved. Now let's quickly discuss a possible setup, how you could measure these um, results. Uh, typically, you should check this quite regularly. I would propose at least once per minute because you always want to know the current status and you don't want old information. You could, for example, run a job in Jenkins, which uses a normal Artifactory user and which log in, logs into all systems. In this case, we have three. And you should connect as similar as the user as possible. For example, use JCLI and you should also parallelize this for speed because you want to check often. You can then, for example, perform an upload and download of a small size, a small, small file, compare the checksums before and after, and maybe change some properties on the system so that you interact a bit with the APIs. Then measure all these results and compare them against the defined good state. So for example, you could say the system is always healthy if the results are fine. If you have three consecutive fails, it becomes unhealthy. If you do it like this, you will still quickly see any issues and you can ignore false positives like network flukes, for example. Be also sure that not only you have these results, but that you can show them in an easy to understand overview to your customers, like a landing page where everyone can access it and one traffic light per server which shows green or red. And also log the results for long-term analysis because you want to show that your uptime is, for example, 99.9% .9 according to the SLA. Another stakeholder would be the team lead or a project manager. So also they may have quite a lot of interactions with the service. For example, they often want to know the resource consumption that their projects have because they have to pay for it. They have a project onboarding in case of new projects, they want to go be up and running quickly. They have to maintain the project, for example, check permissions or add new users. And they might be an innovation driver because they want their project to succeed and always want to know if you provide new features. In this case, let's discuss the project creation and maintenance. 
So if you want to provide a service, you require additional information from your customers so you can do a proper service delivery, like who is the owner of a repository, who will pay for it, and how, who should be contacted in case of issues like a hacker attack, who is allowed to grant access to the project resources, and do we have any special legal requirements that we have to cover? There might be export control, there might be FDA approval, there's a lot. And you have to work together with your customer for this information. You cannot provide this on your own. But if you have these infos, it could be a baseline for future automations and easier, easier interactions. Let's discuss a possible setup, how you could realize, for example, an automatic project creation and maintenance. So a good approach would be to create a small UI for the users where they can log in and enter and request new projects so that you do not have any manual interactions. In this case, you should gather all the information, all the information that you need depends always a bit on your own setup and you should store them on a separate DB. Do not put it just into the artifactory because you need it globally, not just for one instance. And what you could then do if you have these informations, you could automatically create on all your instances via the REST API, all the repositories. You could automatically add the replications. And you could, for example, create an Active Directory group in your corporate Active Directory, hand over the group ownership to the user that requested it so that he can now maintain all the users. And it's not on your central service to maintain this. And after you've done created the repos, you should also add them to your regular monitoring jobs because all your end users need this information like usage patterns of the repositories or the cost that they create or security issues like a public anonymous rights. So you want to report this information to your users. So you should also add them here. Yes, and after this short overview of the some possible service setups, I want to hand now over to Imre. So hello, everybody. Welcome to SpamPop. Uh, my name is Imre Pim, and uh, as Moria introduced me, I'm a service architect on this uh, Siemens Artifactory service. And in the next five minutes, I would like to introduce uh, to you some growing pains that we experienced and some solutions that we came up with. So on uh, the screen, you can see again this map. Uh, I would show another representation, representation of our servers, which just pictures of servers, uh, to illustrate what problem we had once. Uh, basically, some servers became unresponsive for minutes or maybe just tens of seconds. But the strange thing was that there was no indication at all in our monitoring uh, system what can be the problem. So clearly, uh, our monitoring solutions, which were standard stuff like uh, CPU and so on, you know, storage and uh, others like that, were uh, not sufficient. So I would like to show you what uh, other monitoring solutions uh, we installed to uh, circumvent this problem. And you see here HTTP threads, uh, access threads, um, background workers, DB connections, JVM heap. These are all monitorings that are built on the Java Virtual Machine and Bean data. Uh, with a, we read these with a GMX client, which is uh, for our case is Yolokia, but there are other uh, great clients as well that you can use. And as you can see, we now can monitor it. We can set alerts. We also have this health check, which is um, basically um, a standard script with upload some files, download some files, and do standard tasks and uh, measure its time. So uh, this monitoring is really essential for our service at this scale because um, without it, we wouldn't um, uh, be able to function. As you see, uh, we had um, before that sporadic problems. And by the way, uh, it took several weeks with, together with JFrog to find out that it was a problem with um, um, running out of the HTTP thread pool that uh, was uh, enabled in um, in Tomcat. Another occasion there where we could use this data in a great way um, where in one of our clusters, uh, again, it was unresponsive uh, for some time. And uh, with this HTTP thread data, we were able to find out that one of our node uh, one of the nodes uh, got all the real requests, as you can see. Uh, there were a high number of requests for some other um, 
uh, nodes as well, but they were um, event-based replication threads. And uh, as the load balancing scheme um, were based on the lowest number of threads, it was a problem. And of course, we adjusted our load balancing and solved the problem. But uh, these experiences come with growing, and, and it was great to, to have the JFrog uh, support. And also, without these uh, Java uh, virtual machine-based monitorings, we couldn't function. Um, so this was some problem that we had to overcome. I hope uh, maybe you get some ideas from this. And I would like to show you something else. Um, we have these servers, and they generate logs as all the servers all the time. In many applications, it's not really of big interest. Um, for many others, they just look at some logs maybe once a year, or they just archive them for, for traceability. But for us, it's really our daily life to dig the logs. Um, i tell you an example. For example, one of the users come to us and say, hey, my files are not replicated to the remote location. What's going on? And then we had to go to the logs and see if he really uploaded the file, maybe just another file name, mistake on his part. Maybe the replication uh, ran on a, uh, an error and failed. Maybe uh, it's still running. So uh, we really, really need to go to dig in the dog logs and we use a central log analytics solution. Again, it's not a big uh, deal. It's not reinventing the wheel, but it's something we couldn't really live without. And maybe our solutions uh, will be interesting to you. Uh, we use Elasticsearch. Uh, I know that there are great tools out there um, um, uh, as well, and um, like Splunk, like um, Sumo Logic, but uh, really it enables us to function. Uh, for example, I look at the last uh, 15 minutes of access logs. Uh, let's see what's going on. And you can see, we see uh, all the servers at once. Uh, we see all the actions. Of course, we have uh, we track all the fields. I just show you this because may, I don't want to show you some confidential data. But uh, you can filter in those uh, stuff, and you can search uh, stuff. It really enables us to, uh, to live and uh, quickly dig into logs. But it also enables some uh, great insights. For example, we have this dashboard where, uh, based on these logs, we see uh, interesting data, maybe for the management, but also to see the the big picture, like um, what number of requests are coming to the total of our systems. You can see the weekends are uh, less busy than the weekdays. You can see also um, the load distribution between the, the servers and some big numbers. It's uh, great to see the big picture. Or we have this other tool, uh, other dashboard, where we track the number of requests weekly on the servers. It's a great tool to see if there are big shifts in load in our in our system. Like, um, like uh, one of the servers is uh, getting more and more loads, and it's for example, coming up many places like this green server here. Uh, in this case, we might go look into the, the hardware. If, is it sufficient or maybe we need to increase something? And another big um, um, benefit for us is uh, these top errors. We report the top five errors maybe here, and it really can uh, help us pro uh, proactively find uh, big troubles in our system. Uh, Again, we couldn't uh, function at this scale without these solutions. I hope it was um, um, useful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to, to uh, contact me during uh, this session or maybe later. I think my uh, contacts are up there. So thank you for watching and have a great time at Swamp Up.